Hi, everyone. I'm here again with Dr. Nario. Thanks for being with us, doctor. Hi, Steve. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. All right. You all know if you've been watching the channel, Dr. Nario is with Biointegrative Health Center in Reno, Nevada. You can check them out online and see all the things that they treat and what they do there at the clinic. So we're going to talk about, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of questions here about, uh, because you just got back from a conference in Las Vegas, right? Mm -hmm. And this is where you, you learn a lot of the new treatments and uh, supplements and um, a lot of new functional things and not just new, just new research, right? Right. That's correct. Okay. So um, you're, you mentioned that the vagus nerve, did I say it right? That is correct. <laughs> that is the key. And relaxing is okay. I mean, that's going to benefit. We'd be here all day talking about the benefits of that, but blood pressure, um, you name it. Um, so what's the idea here? How, how do we do this relaxation technique or treatment? Mm -hmm. Well, Steve, in, in this convention that I went to, it's in Las, it was in Las Vegas. It's called IFM or um, Integrative Functional Medicine Conference. It's one of the bigger conferences uh, for the year for functional medicine docs. <clears throat> and the, they always focus on the innovative new things on how we can jumpstart the body in order to utilize our natural ways of just healing longevity and one of the top highlights of this this conference is the vagus nerve so what is that it's the 10th cranial nerve it's the longest most complex nerve distribution in our body it's almost like i want you to think of like we're growing roots inside our, our own bodies and this is widely distributed and exchanged from the brain stem to the neck to the thorax to the abdomen it's like little connections where it tells your, the, your, your organs where it's connected to calm down. You need to just calm down and relax because we're living in so much stress every day. And this is the nerve that actually is the, the one, the referee, the one in between, right? And it b maintains b balance and critical bodily functions also. And also one of the bigger uh, factors why you're in health and why you're in disease. It's It has sensory and motor, meaning it receives information and at the same time executes um, the action of the, these information it receives. And it's just something that we always see. I mean, a more famous one that I could probably give you an example of is heart rate variability. So we always hear about this, social media, right? But what is that? Heart rate variability is actually the change of your um, heart rate goes up and down, up and down. If you lose that variability, it means that you're in parasympathetic uh, uh, state. You, know, you, ha you have to have this time of relaxation and also being in a height, heightened response that your body needs to go down. If you don't, if you lose that, then it shows you you're in a pathological state wherein disease and illness is closer to you. So that's why the higher HRV is better and considered good health marker, a health marker and uh, it also assesses the well, a well-functioning parasympathetic nervous system. All right. So how do we trigger this nerve? What did you find out about triggering this nerve to help us relax? What do we do? Well, Steve, you'll be surprised that there's so many ways that they have discussed this. The nerve, as I told you, is all over our body, right? The thing here is we need to find the most accessible one that we can stimulate. So the one that the most common one is here in the carotid area where actually the, 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 the vagus nerve runs through our neck. So that's one of the more superficial ways in how we can stimulate it and also the ear. So those are two points. If you want to go in, you need to do surgery to simulate, uh, stimulate it, but they even have implantable devices that they, uh, slit your chest open, they put a device in there and attaches it directly to the vagus nerve. So we don't want to do that. That's not what we do here in the clinic. We always want to do practical, effective ways of stimulating the vagus nerve. So when we talk about devices, 
the, as I mentioned to you, there's a device, I cannot mention names here, but you put it on your neck and it's, you put it for at least a good five, 10 minutes and you would just relax in that state. And it will vibrate and stimulate that vagus nerve to put you in a very relaxed state. Another one is a ear clip. So you could actually attach that to the ear because one of the smaller areas or branches of the vagus nerve is in the ear. And this also will send signals or electrical impulses to tell the vagus nerve, hey, calm down, just relax. So those are, those are e easy ones. And this is what we call um, non-invasive uh, vagal nerve stimulators. And also other non-invasive ways would be, everybody probably are, is doing this, deep breathing exercise, slow deep breaths. Those definitely would, would uh, stimulate your parasympathetic activity, meditation, uh, mindfulness, singing and chanting, even yoga, and also uh, music. So here's a special one. So there's it's not any type of music. Oh, let me listen to spa music and it will relax me. No, the, the technique here is called um, actually um, SPP, Safe and Sound Protocol. And the music that you're going to be hearing here is it's only the middle frequency. You're not going to be hearing high and low frequencies. It filters, uh, the device filters that so that this specific middle frequency will now stimulate the vagus nerve in order for you to relax and feel uh, better and even uh, calmer. So these are natural ways on how we stimulate the vagus nerve. And uh, there's more to come. There's a lot of technology behind this. And even the government is putting money on it um, for our super soldiers. So I can tell you about that uh, if you're interested. Okay, so let's say I put the device on my neck or I do the ear device. And um, uh, how many times do I have to do it before I notice a benefit? And what type of benefits do people notice and how long does it take? So Steve, with, with the, the stimulators, it takes a little while. As you can see, it's not the direct stimulator. If, if you have a fat neck, for example, so definitely it takes a little bit more pressure. It needs a little bit more of a bigger surface area for the device to get in contact with that. So you're probably stimulating the, the vagus nerve less than a thinner individual, right? So, and uh, even how strong is your device? If you're running out of battery, it's running on the batteries too. So, uh, and even the ear part, um, is, is your ear clean? So you have to clean the area first um, from all uh, debris. But when I tried it, let me tell you my own specific example. I tried it on the spot. You definitely felt that, wow, it's just a calming feeling. Because it's a conference that I was in and they were making us trial the, the devices and it's hectic. You go to different rooms talking to a lot of people. But you just, just gives you a certain calm. Just go in there and use the machine for five minutes. You can do that. You can do it every day. No overdosing, no overstimulating of the vagus nerve. Um, but, but that's why I told you about people who has illness, who probably needs the implantable one. That you need to cut it open and they will be chronically attached surgically to stimulate the vagus nerve. Um, and even they have operations. They call it uh, vagal stimulation. You can actually manually stimulate the vagal uh, nerve by, by during an operation, cutting tissues open. But we don't do that. But as you said, yes, for you, for example, for you, you want to do it, you're probably going to feel this quickly because people who has less toxicities, less problems in the world, it, it's really, it's multifactorial in terms of how much and how fast you will feel the effects of it. Is this something like I put on my ear every day or I do, do I just do it one time or how does it work? Uh, yes. So for me, for example, I have one uh, in the clinic that I use. I put it in my ear. So after in between patients, seeing patients, I just need to calm down. I put that in there like an earphone and turn it on. And it's actually zapping me in the ear just to like calm that vagus nerve down. So I do that multiple times in a day and it really helps me a lot. Wow, you notice. So I'm not sure what you're quite saying about your patients. Uh, mm -hmm. They're stressing you out or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just because they're all piled up. That's why <laughs> it gets me stressed. So just to like, hey, let me park the car and just get into that uh, Zen mode for a little bit. And, and you really notice with this? Yes, I, I'm, wow. I'm a big practitioner of this. I even let's say I don't use the devices. I'm a big practitioner of meditation. Cold, cold plunges, cold showers, yeah, deep breathing exercise. So 
I would suggest for everybody, do not rely on machines. You need to actually make it a lifestyle to, to stimulate that vagus nerve. And you don't need devices or touching it. But if you have these modalities, would it life be uh, maybe a little easier for everybody? So I combine everything just to make it easier. So I'm assuming that this would help lower blood pressure. Yes. Yeah, so now let's talk about the, 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 the conditions or the functions where it, it can be useful. So for the fight or flight, everybody, the businessman, the entrepreneur, maybe Steve, I'm, I'm talking about you. The ones who's always on the go, the people in New York, fight or flight, you need to relax. You need this. Heart rate that goes up so high, people will have like, um, again, atrial fibrillation, um, blood pressure issues. It can definitely lower down digestion issues like acid reflux um, and even um, a slow motility or sm a slow movement, uh, breathing issues, even asthma. There are studies here that asthma definitely benefits from this because it's also a, a very stressful condition that actually when you use the vagal stimulators, it actually relaxes it better because um, there's so many multi-systemic effects that it can be, um, can be used for. Brain stuff, mood and stress, people who has anxiety, depression, it actually increases the, the hormones of uh, our neurotrans neurotransmitters of serotonin and dopamine. And it even lowers hyperactive electrical impulses in the brain. It's like, oh, everything's going on. You're like in ADD mode. And all, yes, and ADD patients could get, definitely benefit from this. They calm down. Any type of inflammation, inflammation in the body, may it be from uh, a rheumatoid arthritis, an autoimmune disease, or a, an osteoarthritis or an injury. So you always have inflammation. You're always stressed. You're always tight. And you would see that on studies, you would see tumor necrosis factor alpha, which is an inflammatory enzyme, lowers down when you use, you use these specific devices, and especially also for pain. It's very good for pain. It lowers down pain signals. And even the brain, if you have neuroinflammation or brain inflammation, that inflammation will go down as well. Okay, so you kind of hinted about soldiers, or yes. I, I guess you're kind of going with the effects of this type of treatment on the vagus nerve for performance. Is that what you're hinting at? Like maybe athletic performance or something like that? That is correct. It's a good thing you caught that, Steve. I was kind of like, hmm, maybe we'll not interest us, interest our crowd here, but it seems like you, you caught on with it. So let me tell you, this actually is a government project that they're actually doing. It's called the tax stim study. And they're actually using these specific devices, people on the field. It's actually for biotech enhanced training and cognition. In short, we're making super soldiers, right? That's like, you only hear about this in Russia or in movies. But, uh, and there's spe this specific for the Air Force uh, when they're actually doing their operations command and defense language in, uh, in uh, facilities. And it's DARPA funded, and they are actually seeing results with the, the Air Force uh, people in terms of improving learning and performance, how they navigate and help the planes land, and how you decide to like where to drop bombs, for example. And it's just making them think quick on their feet and even lowering down the fatigue because when you're looking at screens, it's just so hard in the eyes and also mentally. This also now helps them rethink and think clearly on how to strategize things, even language recall. They can memory, uh, the memory, memorize things better. And also, they also found uh, in some of these studies that it actually is an anti-aging uh, device also because it actually increases telomere length. So telomere, I don't know from our past um, uh, discussions, if you remember, it actually determines the longevity of a person. So as you can see, there's more, there are more things to come to this topic. And I hope um, everybody's going to be on board and, and just practicing uh, vagal stimulation. Not only if you, sometimes the devices are pretty expensive, but as I told you, natural ways on how to do it as well. Breathing and just relaxing techniques, right? That's right. <clears throat> So I guess stress can really affect our bodies in a negative way. And because what you're saying is being able to stimulate this nerve to help us relax, we're improving cognitive function, uh, weight training function, running function. It sounds like everything. And again, you caught that one too. 
it's like this is a video all about how can we avoid the bad effects of stress so that's basically the theme of this uh, of this video and you would see how hard to battle stress is we need to find these external devices to help us out just to navigate through it and this is also a, an eye opener for our audience here that don't belittle stress stress is that little uh, is that that mini person that's I guess, punching on your shins every day and you're just laughing at it, but it's really, hey, you broke my bone already because of those uh, multiple punches that you've gave, given me. But that's my point. This is how bad stress is that we need to now have all these technological help in order for us to control it. But if it's so easy to just do breathing techniques, why do why not just do that, right? It seems like it's just so hard for everybody to do it. But if you can, go do it. Yeah, I think people just don't have the discipline to do it. So I want to say for everybody, if you have questions, put them in the comment section. And I can always forward that to Dr. Nario. But if you have questions, maybe that I didn't ask, put them in the comment section. And you'll also notice that we're starting a um, Dr. Nario um, watch list. So that's a list of videos. It's not all of them, but it's ones, all the ones that we've done this year in 2024 and on, you'll see them all. So you can go see all the different topics that we've discussed. So any last thoughts, doctor? Well, again, Steve, when, uh, when you talk about the vagal nerve stimulation, um, it's definitely something that I always advocate for. Now I all, it, it was in the form of me telling patients about the Wim Hof method, which is breathing and uh, going into yoga class, uh, just walks in the park. Uh, but now I have more in my toolbox in relation to now technology being a major player. We're afraid of technology. We think even for AI, we thought that, oh, it's going to take over the world. But that's going to be also one of the things that I probably will talk about in the future that in the conference they're saying that AI is actually a friend of medicine. So don't be afraid of technology. Technology, I know EMF is part of that, but there is a place and time for technology and natural ways to be merged together to actually help the body heal and recover. Okay, well, I can't wait till we talk again and find out, uh, learn more about some of the um, things that went on in this conference. You were there for about a week, right? Almost, almost a week. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us, Dr. Nario. Well, thank you, Steve, for having me again. As you all know, that our knowledge is your power to better health. And thank you for letting me provide you with the edge and longevity and health maintenance, which I call the biological edge or the bio edge. <laughs>